I went up to her at an award show we were at for Lady Bird and I just tapped her on the shoulder and I was like, I know you're doing Little Women and I know Joe is going to be in it and I think I should be Joe and that's just it. I'm just going to let you know that that's how I feel about it, whatever. She was like, okay, I'll think about it. And I was like, Jesus, okay. So she went off and I don't know, a week or two later, I got an email going, okay, yeah, you should be Joe. It was the first time I'd ever like gone after a role like that. I'd never done that before. I'm always very Irish and sort of like, if you want me in it, you can. You can change your mind if you want, you know. And I think we all felt that way. Like Florence very easily slipped into the role of Amy. Eliza was so perfectly Beth. Emma put so much thought into Meg and made her this very thoughtful character. And Greta knew what she wanted this to be from the get-go. So we all very sort of organically found our place in the group, I think. Watching Greta direct this movie every day was like a revelation. And I could see her grow as a filmmaker every single time we all stepped on set together. Since as long as I've known her, she's always been very confident in what kind of movie she wants to make. But I think one of the things that has sort of evolved on Little Women is that she had the confidence as a director to give us the structure of a scene, hand it over to us and go, okay, just just go and I'll watch and I'll find things that I love and pick them out and whatever. There was just a real ease and a real sort of command that she had over the material and over us. When you watch Greta watch a monitor and she's looking at her actors do a scene, it's like she's at Disney World or something. She's just so in it and so happy and enthusiastic about her actors. And that keeps you going as well. Like when you've been doing a 15 hour a day, you know that the director's like, but we're making a movie and you're all so good in it. Like for her to have that enthusiasm, you really sort of feed off it, so. film is totally feminist. We've got a matriarch who is not saintly all the time. Laura Dern says when she plays Marmy that she's angry almost every day of her life. She's not completely overjoyed when her husband comes back after two years at war. She's angry and she's hurt and she's been alone and you know all of that and it's really lovely to see that. But we also have these like incredible male characters too that are so in touch with these women and their life has just been enriched by these women coming into their life. I scorched my dress, see? There. And Meg told me to keep still so no one would see it. I have an idea of how we can manage. The way Joe and Laurie are in Little Women is the way Timothy and I are in real life. I, like, hit him a lot try and mess up his hair, which he doesn't like. You know, even when we did Ladybird, we were very comfortable around each other. And we're both different actors, I feel like. I like someone to go, this is the goal, and I'll go, right, okay, that's where I need to get to. Whereas Timothy will like go over here, and he'll go over there. And it's very exciting to work with someone who is just trying different things from take to take. I only had one scene with Meryl. I enjoyed the scene so much and I just so enjoyed working with her as another actor and I was like kind of keeping it together and then I remember when they checked the gate on our last setup it suddenly hit me that I got to do a scene with Meryl Streep and I just went over to her and got really emotional and I was like thank you so much for letting me you know do this with you and she's like it's fine you've been hired by Greta you know <laughs> it's not a big deal. My favourite image of Meryl from the day that we did that scene together was just her carrying this little poodle in her arms with her wherever she went um, the poodle was called Michael and when Michael was out of her sight she would just go Michael Michael and Michael would like totter over to her. <laughs> they were best friends. Has anyone taken my novel? No. No way. Amy, you've got it. No, I haven't. That's a lie. No, it isn't. I haven't got it. I don't know where it is, and I don't. Hey, help me! Oh, 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 wait, 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 who burnt it up? Harvey! I burnt your book. It's just the type of film that wouldn't have been made ten years ago. Say, it's a very fresh take on 
a story that we're all familiar with. This is the first time that we've really seen all of the girls shine and have their moment in the sun. From people who I've spoken to who've watched the film, they say, I really understand Amy a lot more now, or even with Jo, I connect to her more in a way than I ever did before, because yes, she's very forthright and she's very much her own person, but she also says near the end of the movie, I'm desperately lonely. Jo, from the very beginning of her life, was like, I'm gonna be a spinster, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I don't need anyone but my family. And it was a very idealistic version of how one's life should turn out. Whether that happens for you in real life or not, it's a wonderful sentiment to have as a woman, to really commit to an idea of who you wanna be or what you wanna achieve. Joe's sense of self was totally sort of based on like autonomy. I think women can really appreciate that. Women really aspire to that. It's something that's still a challenge and it's still a struggle for a lot of young women, say, becoming professionals for the first time or whatever. So I feel like she's sort of this aspirational character for a lot of girls.